Usually, customers depend on distributors to warehouse the finished stock of several product lines. When a customer needs a particular item, the buyer calls the distributors who might stock it, checks the price and availability, and picks the appropriate supplier and orders the product. However, military connector buyers are faced with a universe of literally hundreds of thousands of different parts which they might be required to source. And military connector distributors are challenged by how best to design their inventories to anticipate and meet their customers' requirements for any of these thousands of parts, while still providing competitive pricing and availability, and also staying in business. To meet the challenge, Many distributors build finished connectors from connector components in-house, aka value-added assembly. Today, we'll explain the advantages of value added for the distributor, and particularly for the customer. Suppose a customer needs one piece of an MS3476W14-15SW. This is a military-spec circular connector in the MIL DTL26482 Series 2 family a commonly used connector series that includes over 6,000 possible callouts, 6,520 to be exact, but there's more. The W suffix means the clocking is different from the usual clocking. As you probably know, clocking is the relation of the insert rotation to the shell keyway. Now suppose the buyer contacts two distributors for pricing and availability. Conventional distributor A, who carries only finished stock in this connector series and value-added distributor B, who assembles this connector series from components. In order for distributor A to meet the customer's immediate requirement, it must have the finished connector with the less common W clocking on the shelf. If it's not in stock at distributor A, the customer is out of luck, and so is the distributor. It's a missed sales opportunity. Distributor A certainly stocks the faster-moving normal clocking, but is less likely to stock the W rotation or its related less common rotations X, Y, and Z. Value-added distributor B will certainly be stocking the components, the insert and shell, to build the most common normal clocking for this set of parts. But these same components, the same insert and shell, can also be used to build the slower-moving W clocking that the customer is looking for, as well as the low-demand X, Y, and Z versions. Stocking just two components will allow the value-added distributor to meet requirements for all five finished SKUs, where the conventional distributor would need to invest in stocking five finished SKUs to cover the same potential requirements. Value-adding means that distributor B is more likely to have the components in stock to build a wider range of connectors. This means shorter lead times for customers, even on less common part numbers. This translates into less inventory exposure and investment for customers, meaning lower inventory carrying costs. Value adding also lets distributor B stock fewer SKUs as components without labor investment, so they can build a wide variety of possible customer requirements. Because a single component can be used in dozens of different related connectors, the value-added distributor can buy that component from the manufacturer at higher volume breaks. That results in a lower cost per component. This leveraging of a few components across many finished SKUs means less inventory investment for the distributor, and that translates into lower cost for the customer. In this particular example, MS3476W14-15SW, the same shell component used to assemble this connector is used in 57 other mil-spec connectors, and the insert used to build this part can be used in 96 other connectors. Clearly, the value-added distributor has significant cost and availability advantages for both the distributor and the customer. So what does it take to be a value-added connector distributor? First, the distributor must have a close relationship with a QPL connector manufacturer. QPL means that the manufacturer has been approved by the government to manufacture and build a given part or series of parts. After an exhaustive auditing and testing regimen, the manufacturer is placed on the QPL, the Qualified Products List. Second, the distributor must make the commitment to stock for the product line at the component level. This requires a solid understanding of the complexities of the component structure for each SKU in the product line and the ability to design and document through routers and bills of material the proper assembly process for each and every SKU. 
This involves significant investment in appropriate software to manage and communicate the data, as well as the design, implementation, and maintenance of an assembly process that guarantees that parts are built properly day in and day out. Third, the distributor must be trained in the product assembly of the given family of parts, and that assembly process must be approved by the parts manufacturer. Finally, the government must also approve the distributor's assembly process and controls. This is usually accomplished by an on-site audit. Once approval is granted, the distributor is added to the QPL as a qualified assembly facility for the manufacturer for that particular series of parts. This assures the customer that the parts received from the value-added distributor are absolutely equivalent to parts assembled by the QPL manufacturer itself and meet all applicable military specs. Let's follow the typical value-added distributor as it responds to a customer requirement for the same item we've been discussing, MS3476W14-15SW. Here's an RFQ from the customer for the part. The salesperson receiving the RFQ verifies that there are components available in stock to build the finished connector in the customer's required time frame. Once this has been verified, the salesman communicates price and availability to the customer. Always the best price in stock to build, of course. If the price and delivery look good, the salesperson receives the customer's purchase order. The sales order is entered, and the new requirement immediately triggers a production order to assemble that part. The production order identifies the components, component quantities, and their respective control lots that will be used to build the finished assembly. All assemblies are fully lot controlled at both the component and finished assembly levels. The requirement also triggers the printing of item identification labels. These labels are used to identify the assembly throughout the assembly process. The final element of the production job package is the appropriate router, or traveler, that lays out the exact assembly steps and inspection points required to build the part to meet specs. Each step of the router must be signed off by the assembler as completed. This documents that the part has been built correctly. First, the component parts are picked from inventory and staged for production. The shell is ink marked with the finished mill spec part number. Until the shell was picked for this particular production order, for this particular item, the shell could have been used for any of 58 different part numbers. Now the part number has been locked in and the shell can be marked. Once ink marked, the component is baked to cure the ink so the mark will permanently adhere to the shell. After the parts have cooled, the insert is prepared to be locked into the shell. An adhesive is applied that bonds the insert to the inside of the shell. The insert is dropped into place, oriented correctly with the master keyway in the shell. In this case, the insert is further secured with a steel retaining ring installed with a hand press. The assembly is again oven baked, this time to cure the insert adhesive locking it to the shell. When the assembly has cooled, it's sealed or back potted against dirt, moisture, and other contamination using a silicone sealant applied with an air actuated syringe. The assembly is baked again, this time in a humidity controlled oven that ensures the silicone sealant seals properly. This particular item is shipped with contacts, so the correct contacts, all lot controlled, are kitted with the correct insertion and removal tools and sealing plugs. The contact quantities are verified by scale. Although in-process inspections have been made throughout the build process, a final inspection of workmanship and conformance to spec is done before packaging the assembly. Once inspected and approved, the item is packaged and labeled per the appropriate military and or customer specification. The packaged assembly is then put into the shipping carton, labeled, and closed for shipment, staged, and awaits carrier pickup. Value-added distributors built the processes and controls to accomplish this complex assembly process in a productive and cost-effective way. There are slight differences in the process from product to product and from distributor to distributor, but the previous demonstration is typical. The labor efficiencies realized by the value-added distributor mean lower labor costs, in fact, lower than the labor cost of the conventional distributor who stocks only finished assemblies. All in all, value-added distributors deliver a win-win for supplier and customer in both cost and availability. Questions?